we have two lungs. Each lung is divided up into lobes and we can see those lobes easily if we have a lung. Each lobe is divided up into segments, the bronchopulmonary segments. We cannot easily see the bronchopulmonary segments, but each bronchopulmonary segment has an airway and it has a pulmonary artery, making each segment a functionally separate unit of the lung, a bit like a lobule, if you will. Let's have a look at that anatomy. Let's see how many segments there are. It's a little bit awkward, that one and let's identify them by looking at a painted model. Here we go, here's the thorax. Let's take the rib cage off. There's the sternum so you can see where we are. There's the heart, there's the right lung, there's the left lung. Let me just take this off, this is a bit of neck. And oh, here we go, here we can see the shape of the lung. It's a very, very well used model this because it's got a great load of detail on it, it's fantastic. And see how deep the lung is. So this is the apex, if I pull this up, that's the upper lobe. You can see the horizontal fissure there, separating the upper lobe from the other lobes. That there is the middle lobe. Uh, if I pull that up, so this is the lower lobe, which is very much posterior, lower lobe, middle lobe, upper lobe, and we can see that there are a number of painted segments, and these are the bronchopulmonary segments. So going into the lung, we have um, the left and right main bronchi, that main bronchus branches into lobar bronchi, so three lobes, three lobar bronchi, and then from there, they branch to the segments. The blue here are the pulmonary arteries because the blood going into the lungs from the heart is poorly oxygenated, hence the blue colour. I know also that because they're superior, the pulmonary trunk goes up. So the pulmonary arteries are superior, the pulmonary veins in red are inferior and they're carrying well oxygenated blood back to the heart. Um, so the pulmonary arteries will branch similarly with the bronchi. So, these painted segments representing the bronchopulmonary segments and notice how they're arranged in a very 3D manner, which is obvious when you think about it because the lung is a very 3D shape, but not obvious when you look at textbooks. Um, each one of these bronchopulmonary segments has its own segmental bronchus, has its own branch of the pulmonary artery taking blood and taking air into that segment. Now the pulmonary veins, uh, they actually pass in the connective tissue sheets, the connective tissue planes, which are largely between the segments. So the veins take a slightly different route back. What this means functionally is that each bronchopulmonary segment operates independently of the other bronchopulmonary segments. What this means clinically is that if you needed to remove um, a part of the lung, for example, um, a lung cancer, you could remove that bronchopulmonary segment and you would not affect the function of the other bronchopulmonary segments. To all intents and purposes, they're like lobes or lobules. Um, also, if one bronchopulmonary segment gets infected, it's likely maybe that that infection will remain within that segment. So it's useful to think about not just the lobes of the lung as being parts of the lung, but also the segments. Now, how many bronchopulmonary segments do we have? Well, look, see this model here, there's the trachea. Um, the first major branches are the main bronchi, the primary bronchi. And then the second branches, the not coloured ones, the not painted ones, these are the lobar bronchi or the secondary bronchi, and then the painted ones. These are the tertiary bronchi or the segmental bronchi. Um, and each colour represents a different bronchopulmonary segment. Uh, what we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The colours are a bit similar. But I'm taking each branch, right? One, two, three, four, Ooh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. All right, so how many segments are there on the right lung? 
Oh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten segments on the right lung. For the left lung, got to watch out for some. You might have a bronchopulmonary segment hiding away, covered by the join, right? So upper lobe, lower lobe, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine bronchopulmonary segments on the left lung, which is about right, because typical descriptions of bronchopulmonary segments are that there are 10 lobes, sorry, there are 10 segments in the right lung, and then there are eight, nine, or maybe 10 <laughs> segments in the left lung. What happens is some of those segments seem to get fused, which can make the naming a little bit complicated, but let's have a look at the naming. Okay, here's that, that right lung first. Um, there's the apex of the, of the lung, the apex of the upper lobe, and uh, one, two, three uh, bronchopulmonary segments that we can see here get called the apical, anterior, and posterior segments. Well, that's okay. Apical segment, anterior segment, posterior segment. They also get numbered uh, one, two, three. And that might be uh, prefixed by a B or an S. B for bronchopulmonary segment, S for segment. But number one is the apical, number two is posterior, number three is anterior. So that's the, the upper lobe. Middle lobe has lateral and medial lobes numbered four and five. Take off the middle lobe. There we go, this is the lower lobe. So there's the hilum, so that's medial, that's lateral, that's superior, this is inferior. So the inferior lung gets called the, the base of the lung. Um, so we've got five segments to find here. This superior segment is the superior segment. <laughs> uh, and then if we start medially, we've got the, the medial, the, the basal medial, because this is the base of the lung, the lung. Um, basal anterior, uh, basal lateral, because that's lateral there. And then if we go all the way around posteriorly, basal posterior. So these are numbered uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and how do you identify the segments by looking at a lung? You don't, you can't. There aren't any surface features that let you work out um, which segment is which. You'd have to look at the bronchopulmonary tree. You have to look at the, the airway tree. You have to look at the, the pulmonary artery tree and see where it divides and see where it goes to. And that defines and describes the bronchopulmonary segment. Um, so I could do this on a painted lung, but if I took a lung out of a cadaver, I would not be able to tell you with any certainty exactly where a segment was. I could point to the, you know, the apical segment, but I wouldn't be able to tell you how far it went, for example. Okay, left lung. Okay, what have we got on the left lung? Well, let's just look at the, well, the upper lobe in isolation. So again, we've got that apical segment anterior segment, posterior segment. And then if we consider the lingula is a bit like the middle lobe of the right lung, we've got that superior lingula and inferior lingula segment. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. Okay then, so here's our left lung together. Take the upper lobe off, looking at the just the lower lobe now, same format as the lower lobe of the right lung. So again, we've got that, that superior segment here. Um, but you know how we had like a medial segment and an anterior segment? Well, I reckon, so that's the hilum, right? So that's medial. So this is anterior. This looks like the medial and the anterior segments have become a single segment here but you might see a medial segment. So again, this is the base of the lung, so a medial basal segment, an anterior basal segment, then a lateral basal segment, and a posterior basal segment. 
But that accounts for our difference then. I think we saw nine, seg nine segments on this one, didn't we? Because we saw three in the upper part, two on the lingular part, and then we've got four here. So that adds up. In terms of numbering these segments, if I put those two back together, it's the same principle as the other lung. So segment number one will be up here, will be the apical lobe. And then number two, posterior. Number three, anterior. Number four, superior lingual or superior lingula. Number five, inferior lingual, inferior lingual, lingula. Then number six would be the superior lobe, or the superior segment of the lower lobe. And then remember, the numbering's got to continue. So if we had a medial basal segment, that would be number seven. And the anterior basal segment would be number eight. And the lateral basal segment would be number nine. And the posterior basal segment would be number 10. So that numbering has to continue, even though those two segments have, have combined. Hmm. Which makes everything a little bit awkward. Um, the students I teach, the concept of bronchopulmonary segments is important. Being able to identify each bronchopulmonary segment is not something um, I, I do. But if you're studying elsewhere or studying something different, or if you're becoming a chest surgeon. Okay, let me play you a little bit of music and uh, label these bronchopulmonary segments for you. This is the right lung. the left lung. There you go, the anatomy of the bronchopulmonary segments of the lungs. Um, they are like lobules within a lobe. Uh, the, the right lung has 10 bronchopulmonary segments, the left one has eight or nine. Watch out for that numbering when you have merged segments. Whereas you can anatomically distinguish one lobe from another on a lung from the outside, you cannot do that as easily with the bronchopulmonary segments. The bronchopulmonary segment describes the branching of the airway tree and the pulmonary artery tree inside the lung. Uh, each bronchopulmonary segment has its own airway, its own bronchus, and its own branch of the pulmonary artery. So each bronchopulmonary segment is functionally discrete, can work separately from each other segment of the, of the lung, just like lobes and lobules do in other organs. All right, um, I hope that was useful to all you uh, budding lung surgeons out there. See you next week. Bye.